Saka Kiba. Oh, great shadow, allow me to reach you and be in your presence. Grant your great powers unto me. Really dead? I heard everyone talking. Ah! Ah! Look, look, it's Parker. Laura. Laura. Ah! First there was light, and what lay between the stars was called Courting Darkness. darkness. Adrift even from sorrow, what I see. the survivors turned letters from the sun Fall to ashes. Courting Darkness, from the inkwell of their veins. The survivors took to weaving words of abomination. The words spoke not of the heart. The words instead armored the soul. And the survivors made a fortress of their folly. On the first day, they made fire to burn the sky. On the second day, they made fire to burn the sea. On the third day, they made fire. They made fires to burn the stars. On the fifth day, there was nothing. On the sixth day, there was emptiness. So I count the roses. And on the seventh day, you appeared. You unchained the cage of things forbidden. And the darkness began to change. Strength began to course. And the strength began power. You swept a boat out into the swelling river and guided me across on a link of thoughts, heedless of the water 
most fearful source. Severed from the markers of time. The smothering solitude thawed in your light and became a rising tree on a forgiving hill. The tree began a forest and the forest called forth winged creatures that traced the contour of a heart as they flew. Reconstructing brightness long since forgotten, they overflow, fall from the sky, murmuring their light, crystallize. In the verdance of the trees, gather what falls from the sky, you cried. Fly, you cried. Fly, you cried. Fly, you cried. And when the gods arrived, as life finally came to an end, as it started, they saw boundless joy, and they knew it was your doing. What you guarded in their stead is the brightness that shines within. What you guarded in their stead, I shall call love. And understand at last that first there was light. Laura, do you know who you are? You must learn the truth, for the evil one is giving himself to a fear for power even now, and together they shall become the shadow. Laura, you are the chosen one. You must awake. Hold on much longer. I'm not gonna make it. Not with his injury. 
<laughs> Don't look at me like that. It's okay, Laura. I'm not afraid of dying now. <clears throat> Laura, I want you to do something for me. Leave me here and go. You've got to stay alive. There's nothing more I can do. I'm all... Please, Laura, don't look so sad. You have no idea how happy I've been sp spending my last days with you. You kept me going. And that's why, more than anything else in the world, I want you to survive. The moment I saw you on that plane, I knew I had to keep you safe. Why? But I just knew I had to. That's why... That's why you've got to survive. All I can offer now is to leave you with a smile. I wish I had something you could take with you. But I... You don't want to lose it. It's a precious gift from your mother, Laura. Parton Laboratory. Parton! That's the same last name as yours, Laura. <laughs> this is the Lucy Parton Laboratory. The entire facility has been shut down. Only authorized personnel are permitted access. Mm -hmm. This is the Lucy Parton Laboratory. The entire facility has been shut down. Mm -hmm. Only authorized personnel are permitted access. Please state your name. Please state your name. This is... Laura. Laura Parton. Damn! Open Sesame first... first... first time she said anything, Let Besides moaning and crying. <laughs> It's freezing in here. 
there. I'm a little cold. DNA scan completed. Laura Parton, please enter. Laura Parton's last visit was 27 years ago. Your associate is not cleared for access. Please wait here. It's okay. I'll wait for you here. I know you'll come back. I'll wait for you. Welcome. On behalf of the Lucy Parton Laboratory, I would like to welcome you to the Visitor's Center. Please press any button for the information you desire. This facility houses the Lucy Parton Laboratory of the LPL Corporation and includes the Research and Development Division. The facility, which was moved here to Ultramarine City in 1971, consists of four separate wings. The Visitor Center, which also serves as the showroom. The main laboratory, where the actual research is conducted. The Parton Tower Office Complex and the Library, where all data is archived. Oh, fucking Clone Wars and shit. The Lucy Parton Laboratory of the LPL Corporation was established by the Parton family in 1963. The primary objective of establishing this facility was to continue the research work in molecular biology and genetic engineering, particularly the field of cloning technology, initiated by then Chief Executive of the LPL Corporation and Director of Research, Dr. Lucy Parton. The cloning project was discontinued in 1974, several months after Dr. Parton was seriously injured in a laboratory accident. However, the facility continued to conduct research on agricultural applications of genetic engineering under a government grant until 1981. The genetic engineering technology researched and developed here by the LPL Corporation is still helping to feed the world by increasing the nutritional content of certain types of livestock and grain. Since 1981, only the Visitor Center Wing has functioned as a showroom for molecular biotechnology and genetic engineering. All proceeds from the center are channeled to various university research funds. Dr. Lucy Parton, Chief Executive of LPL Corporation and Director of the Lucy Parton Laboratory, was born in 1932 in Chicago, Illinois. 
After a brilliant and much accelerated academic career, she and her father, the well-known entrepreneur and former LPL chairman, Roy Parton, founded the Lucy Parton Laboratory in 1957, an institute dedicated to research in molecular biology, particularly the then-fledgling field of genetic engineering. Lucy Parton is especially well known for her work on mammoth cell cloning, a project that began in 1963 with the discovery of a perfectly preserved woolly mammoth found in the subarctic permafrost. Dr. Parton also left lasting marks in other fields, such as medicine and agriculture, before her life and work were cut short in 1973 by a research-related accident. data concerning this technology has been erased. Laura Parton, a level D plus key has been issued in your name. You may access the main laboratory. animations like this you can tell it's days before motion capture <laughs> some guy had to animate her walk and all that stuff compared to fucking motion cap everything nowadays and it's pretty boring You've come very far, Laura. I am Lucy, your mother. I've been waiting for you. <sighs> Laura, I'm right here. I know that you've come very far, my beloved Laura. It all began 38 years ago, with a genetic memory, asleep in a wall of arctic ice. In 1963, I began working on a special project using cloning technology to bring mammoths back from extinction. My team discovered a perfectly preserved mammoth specimen in the winter permafrost of northern Canada in 1971 and we were able to extract genetic material from the cell nucleus. Unfortunately, there was too much chromosome damage. But we found something else. In the stomach of that frozen mammoth, we found the undigested remains of a totally unknown organism. Mammoths were believed to be herbivores, but this one, anyway, had apparently eaten another creature. And what a creature. It looked human, but had a pair of wings sprouting from its back. We removed him, 
Yes, the creature was male, from the stomach for further study. Then I decided that we would extract a sperm specimen and attempt fertilization using my ovum and in my womb. I decided to give birth to a hybrid child, fathered by this winged human. The fertilization was successful, but the embryo developed without a trace of wings. That made no difference to me. The child was the fulfillment of my dreams, a miraculous collaboration between me and that being we found inside the mammoth. The baby was born in the early hours of December 31st, under the most spectacular display of Aurora Borealis that winter. It was born across that span of time. I took the first letter of my given name and added the Latin word for air, aura, and named the child Laura. It's true. That was how you entered this world, Laura. When I was in labor with you, I had a vision. Something akin to the will of the cosmos spoke to me and described something important. That a powerful spirit had appeared in the space-time continuum and was on its way to Earth from the far reaches of space and that it would arrive on Earth when my child had become a grown woman. At that moment, for the first time, I felt the enormity even the sin of what I had done. But at the same time, I saw in you the hands of fate. Then, seven days later, my own life ended. But others at this institute and the government wanted to repeat the experiment. They wanted to bring those winged human beings of prehistoric times back to life. They transferred my mind and will to this, to Zylo. But without a compatible ova or a willing surrogate in which to bring the embryo to term, their efforts ended in failure. Look. <gasps> Laura, you must kill me. End your mother's torment so that no one will ever repeat this mistake. Do it now, while I still have my will. <laughs> Wait, you have these legs? Fine. 
Who's this? I hope we can say I'm a friend. Listen, you creep. It's not your money we want. It's your ass. I'm sorry to hear that. Like, comment, and subscribe, or I'll break your fucking legs.